Hey everyone, Academic Doc here and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Leho and I'm a clinical academic doctor working in the UK. If you need to write a case report quickly in a weekend, then this video is going to help you. It can take several days or even weeks to write a case report, but if you are short of time, don't worry. I will be going through five points that will help you finish it this weekend. Make sure to watch till the end of the video because these tips can really save you a lot of time and help you in your journey to writing and publishing your first case report. The first step to do when writing a case report is to come up with the structure. Check out my other video where I go through the structure in a lot more depth. I'll leave a link to the video in the comment section below. The main sections of the case report are the introduction, the case presentation, which includes the history, examination, investigations, management, and then the discussion and conclusion. My second tip is to plan your themes or subsections. Before I write any essay, I find it helpful to write a detailed plan using bullet points for each section. This helps when it comes to writing, as I can just elaborate on the individual bullet points. Let's start with the introduction. This is where we need to provide an overview of what is already known on that disease or condition. We can use ChatGPT to help us in the process. ChatGPT can give us pointers on what key things we should include within each section of our case report. So let's head over to ChatGPT. I'm going to ask ChatGPT to help me write a case report on parathyroid carcinoma in pregnancy and I'm going to ask it to specifically come up with some bullet points for the introduction. So let's see what ChatGPT brings up. We can see here it's provided us a nice overview of some of the key points to include in the introduction. It asks us to firstly define what parathyroid carcinoma is and then give a little bit of background on what the parathyroid glands do and then talk a little bit about the incidence and prevalence of the condition. It then asks us to talk about how parathyroid carcinoma usually presents, uh, its typical symptoms, signs and any specific features that are observed specifically during pregnancy. It then asks us to talk about the diagnostic challenges related to pregnancy. In the last part of the introduction, it asks us to highlight the objective of the case report. Why is it that we need this case report? And what new knowledge does this case report bring compared to previously published literature? One thing that I did notice that ChatGPT did not bring up was to highlight any specific risk factors associated with parathyroid carcinoma. This is particularly important for health conditions because it may be that certain health conditions are more prominent in, for example, women or in a certain age group or certain ethnic backgrounds. So I feel that this is something that should be mentioned in the introduction. You can also use ChatGPT to help you with the next section, which is the case presentation section of your case report. So let's ask ChatGPT to come up with some ideas for that. So we can see it gives us a nice summary of the key elements we should include in our case presentation section. So it asks us to start providing some information about our patient, such as their pseudonym, an age, what gender they are, uh, the number of previous pregnancies, their occupation, ethnicity. And then it asks us to talk about the presenting complaint. So this is where you would include what the patient presented to hospital with, how many admissions they had, a little bit more details about the history itself, their past medical history, any previous obstetric history, family history. So all of the relevant things that you, you would usually include when taking a history. The next part is to talk about the physical examination. Then you can talk about any relevant investigations they had. This includes bedside investigations such as ECG or urine dips, laboratory tests, specifically their blood results. I recommend making a table that summarizes all of their blood results for all their admissions. You can then mention any specific imaging that they had. If the patient had recurrent presentations to hospital before the final diagnosis was made, it's also important to mention any interim diagnoses that were given and how each of the presentations were managed. Similarly, we can use ChatGPT to help with our discussion section. We can see that it asks us to start the discussion by 
briefly mentioning the clinical presentation of our patient and any specific symptoms that were seen that have maybe previously not been observed before. It then tells us to talk about the management of parathyroid carcinoma in pregnancy and discuss any specific challenges that were encountered in our case. The next part of the discussion is the literature review. This forms the main bulk of the discussion section and this is where we need to compare and contrast our findings with other previously published literature. It also asks us to talk about any complications that were observed in our case and any steps we took to try and mitigate them. Lastly, in the final part of the discussion, it asks us to mention any limitations. For example, this may be related to not having access to certain investigations in a particular hospital. It may be related to clinicians not having sufficient knowledge and therefore being able to recognise the condition in a timely manner. Now we have our outline ready, the next step is to find relevant articles that support the different sections of the case report. We can use some of the output generated by ChatGPT earlier for our introduction section. So here, ChatGPT asks us to talk about the incidence and prevalence of parathyroid carcinoma. So I'm just going to copy this and pop it into Google Scholar. And this will give me a list of all of the relevant articles which discuss this. We can also see other relevant articles by just clicking on the cited by section. Now we've got an outline and found the relevant papers for our case report, we can start to elaborate on the bullet points that we previously wrote. Some people find it really easy just to read the articles and paraphrase it in their own words, but don't worry if you don't. I'm going to be showing you another AI tool that can give you some ideas on how to paraphrase sentences. So let's go to jenny.ai. I've just found this random article on parathyroid carcinoma. I'm going to copy this sentence and I'm going to put it into jenny.ai. And now I'm going to use some of the AI commands by Jenny to paraphrase this academically. So let's see, jenny.ai gives us lots of great suggestions for how to paraphrase this sentence. If we don't like it, we can ask it to try again. I wouldn't recommend copying the exact output from Jenny, but using it as a reference guide instead. My fifth and final tip is to automate your referencing. I cannot emphasize this enough. And honestly, when I first started using automated referencing, it changed my life. Firstly, it really helps speed up the process and it also makes sure your references are accurate. It means that you can change the format from one type to another depending on the journal you are submitting to with simply just one click. I usually use Zotero for this. It's user friendly and lets you add citations in Word as you're writing. There is no shortcut to writing a case report. You still have to go through the motions, but if you use some of the tips that I've mentioned today, it can honestly reduce the hours you need to spend writing. And it will mean that you can write a lot quicker than if you were writing it completely from scratch. Also, if you are planning to publish your case report and you have used AI in the process, it's important to disclose this when you submit. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. If you did, please leave a like and hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with the latest content. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.